A man and his wife walks on the streets of Morocco. As he walks on the street, drinking his latte or whatever he's drinking, a van pulls up, black van, hits her, stuns her, puts a bag over his head, and two men drag him into the van and they whisk him away. Now, he gets taken to a black site. And while he's at that black site, a small surgical procedure puts a microchip in his brain. Just a small incision. That chip allows interaction between devices and the human consciousness itself. Meaning, they can create an imprint of the guy into a digital space. Now, for all intents and purposes, everything that you are, for the most part, is just electrical impulses. Everything happens just in your brain, but for all intents and purposes, your touch, taste, feel, all that stuff literally end up as electrical impulses going inside your brain. There's a secondary question built into that um, about whether or not we have bodies with a brain that has a consciousness or if it's the other way around, a consciousness that has a body that um, kind of spoofs the other stuff. I mean, for example, in your dream state, for all intents and purposes, you create a vision of I. All of that supposedly is just you, even though you can walk around, you can talk to people in that state, you can have sexual encounters, you can be on a boat, you can get scared, you can be happy, all of those things. All of your range of emotional experiences, just like you would have here in physical matter reality, happen in that same spot, and you will identify all of that stuff from the perspective of I. And yet... You never think in those terms for this, meaning your consciousness has created literally an entire world and you're experiencing that world and maneuvering through that world through the sense of I. But that, that's a whole different spot. I, I guess my, my standpoint is all that you are for all intents and purposes are electrical signals going to your brain. You could be a brain in a jar. You would experience reality no different. The microchip that the military has access to allows for them to get into that guy's head and create a digital copy of that particular person in a digital space. That copy doesn't necessarily think he's different. I Meaning he has no idea that anything is different from the standpoint of the digital copy versus the self that that digital copy is spoofing. This doesn't seem as hard as I think it may sound as talking about it. If all that we are electrical signals, then what we're talking about are spoofing electrical signals. What is the electrical signal that brings joy? What is the one that brings light? What is the one that brings moving your arm? All of those things. Chip interprets those things and projects it into a digital device. The device itself projects information back that goes to the person that that person experiences as reality itself. Meaning they're screwing with his reality in a digital space. In this space, he's asked questions over and over and over, repeatedly over and over and over. The time span, because he's in a digital space, can be elongated. So things that typically take place in a minute may feel like they're taking hours. They could hold him there for, let's say, a day, and for all intents and purposes, he may feel like he's been there for a thousand years. They can hold him in complete blackness. They can hold him in freezing cold. They can hold him in heat. All of those things. He could be burned continuously without his skin ever really peeling off, even though he would feel all the effects of being burned. They can torture him for as long as they want, without his physical body being harmed. Yes, it may absolutely destroy his mind. They could feed him his liver, recreate his body, and feed him his liver again. And they could do that day after day after day, continuously asking him questions. We can make this stop if you give us the answers that we want. We can make this stop if we give us the answers we want. And then they find out at the last minute they got the wrong guy. Elon Musk wants to put microchips in people's heads by next year. Now, I've talked about stuff like this before, um, but what this means will be a complete leap in human evolution if Elon Musk is successful in doing that. And that's with all of the pains and all of the threats that come along with it. Let's have a 420. Welcome to the soapbox. I wanna talk about potential. But I want to talk about it, not necessarily in giving my own perspective, but more so they say it's better to show as opposed to tell. So let's show. Welcome to the Soapbox.
My name is Jamal Thomas. This is the Progressive Soapbox. And yeah, blaze one if you got one. And let's talk about interesting and odd things. You have a kid. I don't know the year, but this chip technology is in place. This chip technology has been used for a while now. They have multiple instances of it. Your kid goes to school. And you kiss your kid on the head when he goes to school or she goes to school. And you say, be good. Don't hurt nobody. All that good stuff. And your kids say, okay, mommy. And your kid is in a new pilot program at a new pilot school for advanced people around that particular age. And instead of your kid opening up a textbook, instead of him, you know, um, playing with toys or whatever else, he sits at a little monitor. The teacher tells him, today... You're going to experience life as if you were living in Brazil in the year 1988, or maybe let's say 2013, or let's say 2018, the year that the chip technology, at that point, you can have this notion of a real world phenomena around it. But let's say 1980s. And that kid goes in, white kid, and experiences the life of a person living during that particular time, in that particular life, doing a particular task, a particular job in a particular class, socioeconomic status, all that stuff. He lives a life. And within the course of, let's say, an hour, two hours, he's lived an entire life of that particular individual, including the schooling of that particular individual and the perspective that that particular individual held. Hell, he may even have a name of that particular individual. And this kid is going to do this over and over and over and over again. Because what society realized at some point was, look, part of our problem is that we feel disconnected from one another. And if the other person wasn't necessarily the enemy or the other person wasn't necessarily um, misunderstood, meaning at that point it wasn't another, then maybe we can cut down on some of the stress that we have in the way that we interact with one another and end this notion of tribalism, a technological solution. This kid, over the course of the time that he's in school, lives thousands of lives, all races, classes, um, wars, everything all in between and the perspective that that kid has for the most part being able to keep some of that stuff with him but at the very least looking at the world in a different way especially a different way than what we would look at the world seeing as we are locked into this particular body if you were a man a woman or, you know everything in between how you perceive the world and how you perceive other people will be fundamentally different they're not the other anymore for all intents and purposes they may even come across as family that person will be dramatically misunderstood going through society. But if society gets to a point where the school system is built around that type of integration of the whole, you have a different world. You have an entirely, fundamentally different society. That kid has lived multiple lifetimes. By the time that kid grows up and goes out of school and everything else. That kid should be somewhat of a well-integrated person that has all sorts of knowledge of all sorts of uh, years. And not because he read it in a book, but because he experienced what it was like in real terms. I'm fascinated by that particular one because that gives you this notion of a technological solution of trying to evolve beyond tribal conflict. Does that take place after a major war where everything gets wiped off the map? And would parents be okay with their kids going through that particular process? I suppose that that's one of those things where that device will have to be in place for so long that people have just come to consider it second nature. And this notion of trying to evolve is to some degree a different society. Honestly, that's a fundamentally different society. Um, and the, the last one I want to go with is weird, but it, there's a point to it. You're walking down the street with your boo, whoever that boo is. And as you're walking down the street with that boo, you see the clouds break away. And you see a beam of light of sorts that's coming towards you. And it's a craft. And it's not like any craft that you've ever seen before. And that craft lands. Something gets out. You and everybody else that's standing around you is utterly and entirely mystified by what you're seeing. You can't entirely get a good look on it even though you're observing something and clearly there was a crab that landed and this being beckons you to come with them. 
you're concerned, but you don't really have a choice in this, and you find yourself walking anyway, and you end up on a ship. And that being takes you into space, and you fly further into the cosmos, and they speak to you in perfect English. And you realize they're talking to you in your head, not necessarily in the language, but the language that's coming across is English. And they ask, what do you want to know about the world or the universe? And you ask, why are we here? And they explain to you that you are here because you're trying to develop and grow as an um, entity, as a being. That this particular life is just one of many, and not even one of many in the sense that you would think of it as, but more so, you evolve. And as you evolve, you evolve for a particular reason. You are blown away by this. And this thing brings you back. And you find yourself falling out of the sky. Now that seems like a dick move that it would throw you out of the craft like that. But you bolt up. You wait. And there's somebody who's standing near you and they're asking you if you're okay, if you're alright. And you're answering, you know, yeah, you're groggy. But yeah, you're good. You're good. Why are all these people around? They said, look, we we're, we're apologize. We've been hacked. And somebody at the company put in a virus that was this kind of virus dealing with like a UFO thing in order as a spoof of sorts. Um, and you say, no, that's not true. Really, I, I had this being. They said, well, to be honest, all of the people here had a different experience. And the different experience was built about by essentially the person. Meaning there was a bit of technology involved in it, in the interaction of the virus. We're really sorry about this. Um, if there are any damages, the company don't mind paying you, but we really apologize for this particular thing. And he says, no, really, this experience was real. He says, look, the guy over there thought he was being blown up. He thought it was a UFO attack. The other guy thought he saw Jesus. The other guy thought that beings essentially came down in order to welcome humanity into their cosmos. It wasn't real, dude. I apologize. Once that thing is in your head, all sorts of shit becomes possible. You could be shut off for that matter. The government could come in with a fail safe within that particular device and pew, shut you off. You had a protest. And they could even come up with laws to make it legal to do such a thing. Now, not so much in the beginning, but towards the end or towards a particular process where this thing has been in for so long and laws started to be evolved into how you use it. Maybe there's a terrorist, maybe there's a bomb. They say, hey, in case of a terrorist attack, we need the ability to be able to shut off an individual, um, et cetera. And right there, right off the bat, now you have the ability to shut human beings off based on their processes. And that's assuming government. That's not even talking about corporations or the wealthy or the rich. Or what does it mean to live forever if one of those people have a device and you can put yourself in a digital space? What does it mean when you can be in a digital space for long enough to the point where technology evolves, where you can build your own body and bring that person back? Meaning Jeff Bezos comes back in 300 years after they get to the point of building a body for Jeff Bezos. He lives forever. Elon Musk and what he's trying to do literally is an evolution in human, uh, a step in human evolution. There is no cosmic God though in order to assure things go well. I mean, I would imagine during the Black Death, again, those people thought it was the end of the world. During World War II, I would imagine they thought it was the end of the world. In those cases, there was nothing to force reality to go one way or the other. Um, and we can get to the point where we fuck ourselves over royally in something that we do. Depending on how this technology goes, though, this technology could be amazing in regards to human evolution by the same token. Who owns it? Who's going to keep the platform? What are the rules around how that thing is in your head? What are the rules around protecting to make sure that that thing doesn't get hacked? How do you ensure that the signal that that thing is putting out, meaning the moment that you plug yourself into a computer, that computer has access to you also? It's fascinating technologically uh, from a technology standpoint. It's even fascinating from a standpoint of what it means for video games, this notion of putting yourself in a video game what it means for security, what it means even for war, meaning attacks that take place don't necessarily have to take place in bombs. They can take place in regards to cyber warfare where you just kind of ice a large part of the population using some kind of technical device. It's cool, but be aware. There are dangers 
and these type of technologies. Yeah, like and share.